Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome. This is Donna Cohen-Ross. I'm a Senior Policy Advisor at CMS, the Center for Medicaid and CHIP Services. And I want to welcome you all to this afternoon's Back to School webinar. We're very excited to be um, getting into our Back to School season. It's summertime, but there's no time like the present to get ready for what we need to do in the coming months um, to welcome kids back to school and make sure they are healthy when they get there. And we're going to be talking about that this afternoon. Um, before we get started, though, I want to extend a welcome to any of our new Connecting Kids to Coverage grantees who are joining us this afternoon. Um, we're very, very pleased to have you. We, um, as many of you know, I hope all of you know, last week we were very, very pleased and proud to award $32 million to 41 grantees all across the country. Um, these will be grantees who will be working with us on the Connecting Kids to Coverage Outreach and Enrollment Campaign. And some of our grantees have been with us in the past, but some are brand new. And um, to those of you who um, have not joined us on a webinar before, um, I think you're in for a treat. Um, so uh, I am going to hand it over to Sandy Wan, who's going to give us a little bit of housekeeping and logistics before we get into our uh, material for this afternoon. Great. Thanks so much, Donna. And correct, congratulations to our new grantees. Um, for those of you who are on the webinar for the first time, we've got contact information at the end of our webinar, so we do hope you stay in touch. Uh, before we get started, just a few housekeeping items. Um, but some of the technical details that we have just in terms of uh, talking to us throughout the webinar. We have a couple question and answer portions during the presentation, and you can answer ask questions throughout the webinar by typing in the question box in your control panel on the right-hand side of your screen. We'll be compiling these questions and we'll try to address them as, as many of them as possible. We also have this afternoon a couple of open-ended questions that we're really hoping to get your feedback on. Um, so we hope you will use that chat feature. Um, we would love to hear from you. I think uh, for a topic such as this, it's really great for all of us to hear from each other. There are some great things going on out there for back to school, and I know um, a lot of eager listeners and sharers of information. So we hope you will use those features, and we will um, be finding moments within the webinar to share that information. Um, this recording will also be available on insurekidsnow.gov. Um, we will be posting it sometime within the next week or two, so please be sure to, um, if you have colleagues who weren't able to join this webinar today, to make sure you share it with them. So, uh, just to get started, we have an agenda today where we're going to go over a little bit about why back to school is such a great time to do outreach and enrollment, um, some ideas of what you can do for back to school. We have a fantastic partner spotlight today um, about Innova Hospital and some of the great work they've been doing in Northern Virginia to reach um, eligible children, and then some campaign um, resources and support to bring this all together so you can start your own back-to-school outreach activities. Um, so moving along, we have our first open-ended question here, and we really hope you will be part of the conversation. We want to know if you have any tried-and-true, high-impact, high-energy back-to-school ideas. Send us your top three, um, and send chats to Riley Green, that's R-I-L-E-Y-G-R-E-E-N-E, -E -E, um, who's the organizer of this webinar, and we will be collecting those ideas um, and sharing them throughout the webinar. So again, if you have tried and true, high impact, high energy back to school ideas, we'd love to hear them. So send us your top three ideas, the ones that you always go to. Um, the ones that you've tried recently that have turned out to be really successful, we would love to hear them. So why back to school? Um, we think, and just knowing uh, a lot of you have been doing back to school activities for a long time, this is just a great time to focus parents on um, health insurance uh, for their children. It's a great time to do the outreach because um, not only are schools very trusted sources of information. They're sharing information with parents to get their kids ready for school, and this is a great opportunity for you to share information about health insurance, 
Um, we'll talk a little bit about how you can target the right schools, but schools in general and teachers are really um, great messengers for this type of work. Um, and we also know that parents are trying to um, take care of their kids' health care needs during this time. So there are immunizations for the younger ones, um, for your teenagers. They've got sports physicals that they need to do uh, to get ready for sports in the fall. Um, and so it, it really is a time where you can make the connection between health insurance um, and getting ready for back to school. And we also know that when kids have health insurance, they're better able to stay healthy. Um, and then when they're healthy, they're going to be better students. They will miss less school. They'll be able to focus on their schoolwork. Um, all of these combination of factors makes this is a, a really great time to do your outreach. Um, and so many other groups are doing outreach at this time, too. It's a great chance for a partnership. Um, moving on to our next slide here. What makes outreach successful? Uh, a couple ideas we had here was just making sure that you target your activities in the right neighborhoods where children are going to be um, eligible. And that's, you can do that by targeting um, Title I schools, finding out uh, demographically where a lot of these families live and the communities they're, they're in, um, using that information, which is available on a lot of different internet sites. Um, so you know exactly where your efforts are going, and um, you are making sure that you get families who are going to be eligible for these programs. Um, you also want to do events or activities where you know um, parents or caregivers will be present. Uh, that's an important part of this. Sometimes uh, if you're doing activities where it's just a children's camp and uh, parents are just dropping their kids off, they might not know. Um, about their programs. You want to be able to make sure that you're developing relationships with the parents um, as well as the children so you can connect them to the information they need to enroll their kids. Um, and another great aspect is to be able to have a resource where you can um, connect with application assisters or people who can actually get you into, get your families into the enrollment process. And so there are a lot of great organizations out there that can do this. Um, who have trained application assisters, depending on the state where you live, um, you know, you can find out more information about where you can access these groups and, and get connected to them. So moving on to our ideas, outreach ideas that make the grade. Before we get started on that, we wanted to find out from you if you are planning back-to-school activities, what you have in your back-to-school plan. Are you working with local school districts? Are you working with a local retail chain, chain maybe doing some business out, or outreach through to families through businesses where they're going back to school shopping, shopping for school supplies, school clothes, um, that type of thing? Are you hosting a media event? Um, perhaps with some elected officials to talk about the importance of health insurance in this back-to-school season? Are you partnering with community events that are already happening on the ground, maybe some backpack giveaways or um, local churches that are having camps over the summer? Um, and maybe you haven't planned anything yet, yet, and that's why you're on this webinar, because you want some ideas to help you get started. So if you all could just make, the, make your choice in the poll, we will see what the results are. So we'll just give you a second. So we're getting some results in. Thanks for your patience here. We've got about 60% of you that are working with local school districts. 10% of you are working with a local retail chain. 11% of you are hosting a press event. 60% um, of you partnering with community events that are already taking place. 
and about 20% of you don't have anything planned, and so we're really happy you're here, and we hope to give you some ideas. Thanks so much for participating in that. Okay, thanks. Thanks, Judy. I'm going to just um, talk us through some of the uh, opportunities for um, back-to-school outreach as we go forward, um, just to kind of put some of those ideas on the table, and I know some of you are answering our initial call for um, uh, great ideas and tried and true efforts, and um, uh, we'll, be, we'll be referring to some of those as we go forward. Um, so first I want to talk about opportunities for school-based activities, and those are probably feel like the most likely ones since it's back to school. Um, so I think um, what we want to do is think about all of the opportunities where, um, as Sandy said a moment ago, we're not just focusing on the kids, but where we're having access to parents and other family members as well. So school registration and orientation, especially when um, families are enrolling their kids for, for kindergarten or um, for a new school, um, getting oriented to a new school, that's a great time to set the stage for an expectation, um, the school's expectation that children come to school healthy and ready to learn and what we're um, ready to do to help um, families get there and to talk about health coverage at that time. Back to school nights just as, as well. It's a time to talk to parents about what's available in terms of health insurance and connect them with uh, with enrollment efforts that could be going on uh, at the school or in nearby uh, community-based organizations. Uh, PTA meetings and organi other organizational meetings, a great time to get information um, out to families about those opportunities. Um, Sandy mentioned uh, sports physicals and um, uh, other opportunities where connecting uh, connecting children with health insurance when they're seeking health care um, as a great idea. And it certainly is. Uh, certainly uh, anything that we can do to get all members of the school community involved in outreach is really important. And so um, we should remember that coaches and athletic directors, um, others that work with students who are um, wanting to participate fully in school activities, they're a, a great way to get information out uh, about health coverage and getting kids enrolled. Many schools have, uh, and school districts have uh, requirements that children get back to, uh, get uh, uh, sports physicals before they play. Some may even require them to have health insurance. Many times for students who don't have health insurance, um, they're offered uh, insurance that may not be very comprehensive, and it may only focus on um, uh, getting that child care if they're injured on the field. But connecting those families with more comprehensive coverage, free or low-cost health, health coverage through Medicaid and CHIP can really be um, an important opportunity for families because it keeps those kids covered when they're, um, when they're on the field and also throughout the school year. So that's really important as well. Um, thinking through other um, avenues for communicating with families through school newsletters and, and social media pages that are um, becoming more and more common through schools and school districts are also important. So Donna, we've gotten a couple responses to our open-ended question here. Um, and some of them are related to schools. So I just wanted to share examples of what people are talking about here. Um, from Diana Heap. Thanks so much, Diana. We said, she says that uh, she works with her Medicaid outreach office for a school district and that the district requires each student to enroll each year very, via an electronic process. So she puts a questionnaire in there that asks families um, if they have health insurance and if not, uh, they let them know that Diana's office can help them with information about signing up for CHIP and Medicaid. So out of enrollment of 34,000, they had 1,500 folks request our help during the last school year, which is great numbers. Um, and there's also a message here from David Chase, who was talking about training school nurses on application assistance and give them answers to frequently asked questions, which is also a great avenue 
to work through since school nurses are um, very dedicated health professionals and, again, a very trusted source of health care and information for families. Um, so those were some great school-based ideas that we wanted to chime in great. on. Great. Thanks, Sandy. And thanks so much to Diana and David for contributing those ideas. What I like about both of them is that you've really uh, found ways to bring application assistance into the school. Mm -hmm. And that's really great when families know um, that they can get reliable information and also reliable help right on site. Um, that really closes the loop for them. And then one more from Caitlin Chan, um, who's putting outreach info in the contact info that goes along with required school registration documents, um, which is something that we will hear a little bit more about. And then linking the county database to the school database so that schools whose Medi-Cal um, Students whose Medi-Cal coverage is ending can be contacted for retention, which is also a great, great reminder. Great. Um, I, it's, it's a very important reminder because as you'll hear us say throughout any and all of our webinars, we care just as much about keeping eligible children covered as we do about getting, their, uh, getting them covered in the first place. So I think we always want to keep, keep in mind. Um, how important that is. So, Caitlin, thanks so much for that contribution as well. And San Sandy, thank you um, for uh, uh, bringing those into the conversation. Uh, what I want to do is kind of move on um, and talk about uh, community opportunities for community-based activities that can sync up with our uh, back-to-school activities that happen in the schools. Uh, sometimes, uh, uh, you know, making those connections between community organizations and the schools is a way to bring the total community into the mix. Um, but also, I think many of us who have had a long history of working with schools know that some of those things don't happen overnight, that those relationships that have to be forged and permissions that we have to get in order to work in schools take some time. And for folks who are just starting out, um, it may be helpful to start back to school activities um, through community organizations that have connections with schools um, but maybe are bes right beside the school. And so some activities that um, have been working well in lots of communities include things like backpack giveaways, school supply drives. So getting, um, we, we'll talk more about this, but getting local businesses involved in um, providing uh, help with those backpack giveaways and school supply drives um, uh, and making sure that children in the community have what they need to get started um, with school is, is a really great uh, uh, activity. And uh, in those backpacks, uh, we can make sure that there's information on telling families about health coverage, but also linking them to the application assistance that's so important. If you, um, uh, if you go on to Insure Kids Now, if you go on to Insure Kids Now and you look at our outreach video library, you'll see if you click we featured uh, a backpack giveaway event, uh, back to school event, uh, a couple of years ago. And we're going to talk more about our back to school boosters, but some of you who've received those back to school boosters um, will hopefully have seen that video again uh, in the last couple of weeks, just to remind us. Um, back to school fairs with elected officials in many cities and counties around the country. Elected officials are focusing on back to school time as well. And um, we know that some of the groups that we're working with in our target markets, um, Houston is one that comes to mind. We know there are big back to school events that are, that are happening um, all across the country. And so if your organization can uh, work with those uh, already planned events and make sure that they include information for families on how to uh, find out more about health coverage through Medicaid and CHIP, how to get enrolled, that will make, uh, will, will, will make sure that those back to school fairs include the, include the important health information. Um, we mentioned a little bit about retail partnerships uh, for back to school shopping. And we know that, you know, just in every community, you see all kinds of back to school 
school sales and um, uh, opportunities to uh, make sure that uh, family shopping for school supplies and uh, new clothes for school, uh, uh, those, those retail businesses are trying to bring people in, thinking about places where people shop, thinking about places where there are uh, discounts available and uh, uh, businesses that appeal to families whose children might be eligible for coverage and working with those businesses to help provide information about Medicaid and CHIP at the same time is a really important um, and uh, uh, a great activity that uh, we know has been uh, very useful and very helpful in communities um, that we're working with. Um, some of the back to school activities that happen in the community are focused on health as well. Um, health fairs, immunization drives, and um, our, our special guest is going to talk a little bit about those in just a moment, um, along with partnerships with healthcare providers and clinics. So again, uh, uh, as families are thinking about getting their children ready for school and are thinking about um, making sure that their health needs are met, this is an important time to also make sure that they have the opportunities to get children the health care they need throughout the year, and health coverage is the way to do that. Thanks, Dan. And we had a couple more come in, a couple more ideas, which uh, we're really grateful for. Please keep chatting, chatting away with us. These are great ideas that are coming in from all of you. Um, Dewana Hill had mentioned that she actually puts information on her program in report cards and progress reports, which is great. Um, and additionally, they have robocalls from principals and superintendents to families. So that's a really phenomenal effort to make sure um, the school-based outreach is going on with Medicaid and CHIP information. Um, Kathy Ann also mentioned that she does uh, the Mayor's Backpack and she'll be participating, Backpack Giveaway, she'll be participating in that event um, in August and as Donna said, there are a lot of events that happen through electric, elected officials, mayors, um, city council people, anyone who's uh, working with um, low-income families for getting them ready to back to school. They do free haircuts and that type of thing, um, give away some school supplies. Those are great places to get engaged in application assistance. And then Michelle Canfield had mentioned that she is part of the middle school and high school registration days, um, and that they actually have a separate room for application and that they stay there all day long. So they're for, they're from 7 to 7, um, and they get a lot of good Again, using that um, connection to schools as trusted sources of information, being able to connect with the teachers um, who are engaging with families and um, giving them the opportunity to provide the application right on site in the school is a great idea. Great. Sandy, thanks for those and thanks to um, our contributors for those great ideas. We're going to talk a little bit more in a while, I think, about um, providing application assistance, but I um, I took note that you mentioned that at, those, uh, at the registration event there is a separate room for applications. I think we all need to keep in mind that um, the application process takes a little time. It's kind of a private thing. We want to make sure that um, if we're going to provide application assistance that we uh, uh, also provide for those needs that families have um, with respect to that privacy. Uh, comfort and child care as well. Um, families are going to have their kids with them when they come to those uh, back to school events very often and if they have little children, providing child care so that families can attend to the business of um, applying for coverage and, and dealing with some of the other things that they need to do can be really, really helpful. Um, so um, thanks for those great ideas. and. Um, I actually do want to know where that Mayor's Backpack event is, and I'm not sure if we know that from the chat, but uh, we can find out. We can find out. We can, and I just want to mention to all of the folks who are contributing, as we get to the question and answer session, if you have more to say about what you have uh, told us through the chat, we hope that you'll uh, uh, just jump into the question and answer period and tell us a little bit more. About, what, about what's going on, and we're going to do that in just a little while. Um, I want to uh, just go to the next uh, slide, which is already up there, reaching out to the media. Um, and this is so important both before your back-to-school activity, 
during your back to school activity and after your back to school activity. You want to share events on community calendars. You want to do whatever you can to publicize an event um, beforehand. Uh, and you want to uh, make sure that throughout you are thinking about the right spokespeople, the people who can champion your program, champion what you're doing, but also help talk about what uh, the personal side of uh, getting health coverage for their children, whether it's families whose children have already been enrolled, who can talk about what that process was like, um, hopefully that um, uh, the application assistance that you've provided made it easy for them and simple for them. Most important, we want to make that connection to the health care itself and having uh, families talk about uh, what it was like to be able to get health care and checkups for their children uh, because they have the coverage is extremely important and very um, compelling and motivating for other families who might be reading about them or listening to them. Um, when we think about champions, we think about a, a teacher, a school administrator, um, a school bus driver, anyone in the school community who has um, connections with students and families um, who can really convey the importance of health coverage can really be a fine spokesperson for your um, programs. One of our contributors mentioned working with school nurses, and I can't think of more dedicated, a more dedicated group of school staff who can really talk about the importance of health coverage, and many of them do a lot of really hard work to get children enrolled. And that's whether they're associated with a, a, a school health clinic or just um, uh, are the school nurse in charge of a school, and many of them have many more than one school. Um, but they are focused on making sure children have health coverage so that they can get the care that they need. So, as our second question and being part of our conversation, tell us your best way of incorporating Medicaid and CHIP enrollment into your back-to-school activities. We know that um, outreach we definitely want to be able to educate families about this, but as Donna said, sometimes the application process can be very um, long and needs to be private, and um, there are a lot of considerations to take into effect uh, when you're doing these activities. But if people have a creative and inventive ways of making sure you um, can screen families for eligibility or get them um, information about starting an application, um, a lot of um, ideas coming from you all would be very helpful in terms of um, kind of closing the deal and making sure that we can get these kids enrolled. So we would love to hear from you. Again, please use that chat feature um, and send your chats to Riley Green, who is the organizer of our webinar today. We would love to hear your ideas. Okay. Well, uh, take a moment to introduce um, our guest speaker for today, our partnership spotlight. Um, I, it gives me great pleasure to introduce all of you to Jill Christensen, who is the Director of Health Access um, with Partnership for Healthier Kids. And she's going to tell you more about Partnership for Healthier Kids. But there are a couple of things I'd like to say. Um, this is a program that I have um, been working with for many, many years. The project started in 1998, and it is um, an initiative of Innova Hospital System, which is a, a large hospital system um, right outside of Washington, D.C. in Northern Virginia. And over time, connections have been made with um, school districts in five counties in Northern Virginia. And the breadth of the activities is really quite extraordinary, and the uh, the work that this project does in such a diverse community is really um, quite remarkable. Um, Jill and I were chatting just a little while ago. In the communities where uh, Partnership for Healthier Kids is working, um, over 90 languages are spoken among the students and their families. And so this is really a tremendous challenge, but one that um, that Partnership for Healthier Kids has been um, addressing with great success over the years. Um, we've asked Jill to share with us some of the things that she's been doing um, 
uh, with respect to back to school. And um, some of the things that we've talked about already are things that Jill has put into practice. And we're just really pleased to hear more about how they can work um, in a community. So Jill, um, I hope you're still with us. And I'm going to turn it over to you. Wonderful. Thanks, Donna. It's a pleasure be, to be here today. I'm just going to give a quick overview of our program, and then I'll go into kind of the strategies that we use during back to school time here at PHK. So as Donna had mentioned, PHK is part of a NOVA health system, and we're a large not-for-profit health system in Northern Virginia. And PHK provides comprehensive outreach and enrollment assistance to families with uninsured kids um, for programs like Medicaid, CHIP, and safety net providers that are in our community. Um, as Donna mentioned, we are a very diverse community. Over 70% of our um, client population speak a language other than English. So um, it can be a challenge, um, but we have definitely found ways to engage with the population and make them feel comfortable applying and sharing the information that's required. Um, we're primarily funded by ANOVA, but we also do receive grant funding um, through the Virginia Healthcare Foundation. And um, as Donna mentioned, we've been doing this work since 1998. Uh, next slide. <laughs> so one of the um, kind of biggest outreach strategies we do related to back to school outreach is our free school physical events. And so every summer, we collaborate with our local school system, the health department, and faith communities to provide free school entry physicals and immunizations to children who are uninsured and entering school for the first time. Um, in Virginia, it's required um, that students pre-K through sixth grade do get a physical, and of course, everyone needs to be up to date on all their um, immunizations. And I guess it was 10 years ago or so, we kind of found that there was a gap, that we were seeing a lot of kids start school delayed, our uninsured kids start school delayed, because they didn't have that required um, physical completed. And most private providers charge anywhere from 45 to 80 bucks for just that physical exam, which is unaffordable to a lot of our families. So um, we collaborated with um, the school systems, the health departments, and our faith communities to kind of put these events together. Um, it's definitely a collaboration. We don't do it on our own. The health departments take a huge chunk of the work in, in the fact that they provide the immunizations. The faith communities are amazing in providing volunteers and back-to-school supplies. Um, and then Partnership for Healthier Kids' role is to really provide that, that um, enrollment assistance. The goal is to get them started in school on time. But the, the larger goal is to get these kids enrolled in something long-term so that, that they can get the care that they need throughout the school year. So PHK provides all of the um, kind of pre-registration services. We do the flyer. We, our phone number is on the flyer. We do all of the appointment scheduling. Um, and when a family calls to make an appointment for the event, we screen them for Medicaid and CHIP. And we begin the enrollment process right there over the phone. We're on site um, at the events to provide face-to-face um, -face application and enrollment assistance. And I think Donna and maybe somebody else um, chimed in that it was a really important to have kind of that private space. <coughs> Sorry. And again, we, we totally agree. So we have a separate room um, on site at the event to kind of meet with the families face to face. Most of the time, we're just finishing up the process because we started it over the phone. So we've gotten their application completed. We're just waiting on that documentation. So at the event, um, the families are encouraged to bring you know, their pay stubs or whatever documentation it is that we're we're needing to complete that application, they bring to the event um, on the day of. And we can actually, at the end of the day, have a completed um, application ready for enrollment. Um, we host about four of these events every year, sometimes five, depending on the need. Um, and we get about 100 kids at each event. So we see um, over 400 kids at, at each event, which in in, turns into 400 referrals. So referral really is a potential eligible child for um, Medicaid, CHIP, or um, a safety net provider if they're not eligible. So um, it's a great way to provide a service to them, to provide a service to the school, because you're getting these kids able to start school on time, and um, a great way for us to connect with the families that really need our help. A lot of the families that we see um, at this event are new to the area. A lot of them are new to the country. 
So this is the first kind of introduction into Medicaid, into CHIP, into the resources that are available to them. So um, we actually have a pretty good um, conversion of families that come into the event that actually get enrolled. Um, some lessons that we've learned over the years of doing this event is that um, you have to make the screening process a requirement. So for the first few years, you know, we made the appointments. We, we asked families, oh, do you have time to do a quick assessment? A lot of folks just said, no, I just need the appointment. I'll, you know, we'll be there on the day of. And then on the day of, we had a table, but it wasn't required to stop at the table. And so, of course, you know, families, there's a lot to get done during that day. Um, and so we were being skipped over. So um, it's now a requirement that, that folks are screened. If they don't do it over the phone, because maybe they don't have time, maybe mom is working and she just needs to schedule the appointment, she has to stop by our booth. Um, and it's kind of, all the kids kind of get a routing sheet and they can't check out until, until they've seen um, our table along with all the other stations. So that was a big lesson learned. Um, I mean, now we get 100% of the kids seen screened. Um, next slide. Another um, tactic we use um, is free and reduced price lunch mailings. So um, in our area, we have a lot of kids that take advantage of the free and reduced um, price lunch program. And um, so there's kind of a copy of the third sheet flyer we use embedded in the, in the slide. And this is sent to families um, in English and Spanish on very brightly colored paper. Um, in the confirmation packet that they receive when they've been approved for free and reduced lunch. So free and reduced lunch um, eligibility is 185% of the federal poverty level. So we know that these kids are income eligible for Medicaid. Um, obviously, there's other factors that they might, you know, might make them not qualified, but, but it's a good starting point. So um, each year we send about 72,000 flyers out with our free and reduced lunch mailing. And we get usually a 10 to 11% return. Um, we do it a third sheet because it's expensive. And so um, we can get three for the price of one. Um, and on brightly colored paper, like I said. One thing um, that we learned is definitely sending it in the confirmation packets. That will reduce the number that you have to print and will, will better target your audience. Um, one other thing to note is uh, a lesson learned is putting the income um, limits on the flyer. A lot of people think that they don't qualify based on the income that they bring in. And so we found that by putting it in, like how much a family of four can make, um, really gets the attention of more families. They won't self-select out, um, as well as kind of doing a quick drill down of what, what um, you know, Medicaid or CHIP covers um, so that they know it's very comprehensive. Um, some other lessons we've learned doing this strategy, start early. Start working with your food nutrition services departments early. Um, know what's happening at your state, at your Department of Education. Um, in Virginia, the Department of Education and the Department of Medical Assistance Services sends out these kind of third sheet flyers automatically to, our, to the food nutrition services. And on that is the 1-800 number in our area. And so we really wanted to personalize and put our number um, so that families are more likely to respond because it's a local number. It's not a 1-800 number. And um, we can provide that face-to-face -face assistance. So um, check with your Department of Education um, to make sure that they're not sending these flyers before. Definitely don't want to duplicate uh, services. Um, and then, like I said, send them into a confirmation packet. Um, next slide. And then some other tactics. And, and I wouldn't say that these are hugely, they don't generate a high volume of referrals, but, but that's not always the purpose. A lot of what we do is building our reputation in the community, building those relationships with the families, with the schools, um, and with the community to build their trust and um, their confidence in the services that we're providing. So things like kindergarten registration, Head Start registration, and back to school nights, particularly back to school nights, we don't generate a ton of referrals by going to a back to school night, but we do build great relationships with the schools, have name recognition, 
so that when maybe we do a more targeted outreach later in the year, families recognize us and recognize us as a trusted source um, because you know they've seen us before and they've seen us in their schools. Um, presentations at school staff meetings are a wonderful way to get your information out to those in the schools who can really have that connection with the families and know who needs your help. Um, school nurses, I think Donna mentioned, are fantastic. We love our school nurses. They go above and beyond to help these families get enrolled, and they are a great referral source for us. Um, social workers, registrars, counselors, all of those. Um, I work every summer trying to get on the agendas of all these staff meetings at the beginning of the year. And I bring you know, all of our outreach materials, our flyers, our brochures, um, you know, giveaways, any kind of things that um, the school staff can use to communicate to families, you know, that we're here to help. Um, and that really generates referrals all year long. Although we focus, you know, on the message delivery during the back-to-school time, that, that reaps benefits all year long. Um, another thing we do is outreach mailings to school principals, engaging them in outreach. This is a super simple way to um, kind of, again, remind people that we exist, remind um, the schools that we're here. Um, and it's really, it's a great way, um, a great outreach strategy if you're new to this, if you don't have the relationships with the school system administration. All, you know, most schools have a website, and on their website lists their principal's name. Um, so you can, you can go there, find a school that's high need. We utilize um, free and reduced lunch statistics to find the schools in the neighborhoods um, that will have the biggest bang for our buck. Um, so, so our Department of Education posts school by school what the eligibility for free and reduced lunch um, at each individual school is. So we use that to target what schools we want to um, kind of do our outreach at. So you can send the principal a letter introducing yourself, introducing your program, um, include some outreach materials for them to share with the school nurse or the front desk or um, the registrar. And it's a great way to kind of kind of get your foot in the door if you don't have those school system um, relationships built yet. Um, so I'm excited. I think that um, I've heard some great ideas um, from all the sharing that's going on. So I look forward to hearing more. And that's all I have. Jill, thank you so much. That was really a great presentation and, and gave us uh, some put some meat on the bones for some of the uh, the broad ideas that we were sharing before. You've really helped us see how they can work. And I will say, um, I was going to ask you to respond to one of the questions that came through the chat about some best practices for getting partnerships with schools. But I think some of your last comments actually did address those. Just ways to um, make connections with um, with the principal, let make sure they know what your organization has to offer, sharing your materials ahead of time. Um, one of the things that you said, I hope everybody will take to heart, and you said that a, a few minutes ago that, you know, when you go to back to school night, maybe you're, you're, you don't expect so much to get uh, kids enrolled at back to school night, but it's a great, great way to uh, forge and, and nurture some of the relationships that you have with schools and with the community, that people get to know you and know who you are. And um, I thank you for that because I just think that, um, you know, being a, a steady uh, uh, person and, and, and uh, uh, providing the, that kind of ongoing help in the, in the community and getting, uh, making sure that people get to know you uh, pays off down the road. And so that's a really important thing to keep in mind. And then we also have another question for Jill through the chat um, that came from Mindy. The question is, um, you know, you had mentioned the first-time physicals, the free first-time physicals, and she just had a question about um, insurance. If, this, if a patient has insurance, um, do you still bill for it? How do you get around insurance contact, contracts? I guess she's tried to offer discounted or free services, but it has sort of run into a little bit of an obstacle there. Um, and she loved all of your ideas, by the way. Great. Um, so part of the prerequisite for coming to the event is you have to be uninsured. We have, it's all volunteer doctors, volunteer nurses. So we really limit the um, availability and the slot to those who can't get the care elsewhere. 
So um, if you have insurance, you know, unfortunately you can't come to these events um, and we, you know, we'll help try to help you find a community provider that you can get into. Um, we have lots of federally qualified health centers in the area and places like that who, if you have health insurance, you know, can, can take care of you. So. Great. Uh, thank, thanks, Jill. And I just uh -huh. want to say we are getting lots of questions and lots of ideas through the chat. Um, we're actually having quite a bit of fun here. Um, <laughs> taking those, those uh, suggestions and chats from you. And I think um, Riley wanted to share with everybody some of the great stuff we're getting. So one of the things uh, she's done is through the chat, given you a link to, um, I think it's Voices for Utah's Children, sent us a link to their website with some fabulous pictures of some back to school activities. And so um, we're sharing those family photos with all of you. And we're really pleased to get them. So thanks for sending them. Um, Jill, I'm going to, uh, we're going to take this time to um, open it up for questions and answers. Um, some of you have been uh, uh, sending them through. And I'm going to ask, um, Sandy, is there a special procedure for uh, for question and answers, do we want people to use the chat? Do we open the phone line? What's the best way? I think we're going to stick with the chat. Um, we would.